continuing with tw chapter 21, um, so synthetic marijuana, often called spice. Um, it's a variety of herbal incense or smoking blends that resemble THC, uh, produce a very similar high. However, these effects are very powerful and unpredictable. Um, it might be simple euphoria to complete loss of consciousness, and we're seeing these used more and more. Hallucinogens, uh, they alter a person's sensory perception of the world around them. Uh, the classic hallucinogen is LSD, um, and we also have PCP, but abuse of PCP is not super common amongst young adults. Um, it's more of a um, dissociative anesthetic, easily synth synthesized, highly potent. Um, this tends to be more experienced drug users. Um, hallucinogens as a whole cause visual hallucin hallucinations, intensify vision and hearing, generally separate their user from reality, but patients can have what they call a bad trip. Um, this can cause them to have hypertension, tachycardia, anxiety, extreme paranoia. The thing with um, hallucinogens is it's really hard to interact with that patient. Try and be as calm and professional as possible. Try and provide emotional support, but it can be rough. Um, try not to use restraints, if at all possible, um, unless you or the patient are in danger of injury. And it's e even better to call ALS before it gets to that point because that chemical sedation um, or chemical restraint is necessary. Make sure you watch the patient very carefully throughout transport. Don't leave them unattended. Um, you've seen people that are high that um, become superhuman in strength. PCP is one of those things that can cause that. So be very, very careful with this. Anticholinergic uh, agents. So these are medications that block that parasympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic is the rest and digest. Um, there is kind of a classic picture for a person that's taken too much of an anticholinergic. So we say, hot as a hair, bl dry, blind as a bat, dry as a bone, red as a beet, and mad as a hatter, because that's kind of how they look. Um, typical anticholinergics are atropine, Benadryl, Jimson weed, and amitriptyline, or Elevil. Um, usually, these medications, um, aside from Jimson weed, they're not typically abused drugs. Oftentimes, somebody just um, accidentally overdosed, truthfully. It's often hard to distinguish between an anticholinergic overdose and a sympathomimetic overdose because patients in both groups may be agitated, uh, be tachycardic, and have dilated pupils. And um, another part to this is tricyclic antidepressants. They have very significant anticholinergic effects, and death can be crazy rapid. Um, patient can go from being relatively normal to seizure and death within 30 minutes. Um, the seizures, dysrhythmias, um, are typically uh, needing to be treated at the hospital, transport immediately, and consider calling ALS very, very quickly. They have some medications that they can give that can make the patient's survival more likely. Cholinergic agents overstimulate normal body functions that are controlled by parasympathetic nerves. So instead of blocking it, now we're going to hype it up. Um, this includes nerve gases that have been designed specifically for chemical warfare and organophosphate insecticides that farmers use every single year on their crops. Your poisoning results in um, a patient that has excessive salivation or drooling, 
mucous membranes tend to oversecrete, runny nose, excessive urination, tearing of the eyes, uncontrolled diarrhea, and an abnormal heart rate. There's two major mnemonics that um, define cholinergic agents. So uh, the first one that's on your screen is dumbbells. So diarrhea, urination, meiosis, uh, constriction of the pupils, bradycardia, bronchospasm, bronchorrhea, so discharge of mu mucus from the lungs, emesis, lacrimation, lacrimation is tearing up, seizure, salivation, and sweating. Um, the one that I used when I originally learned about cholinergics is this one, uh, sludgem. So salivation, sweating, lacrimation, urination, defecation, gastric upset, emesis, and muscle twitching or meiosis. The biggest thing is don't get exposed yourself. Um, sometimes decontamination is going to take priority over um, immediate transport. Oftentimes we end up uh, bringing in the hazmat team to provide decontamination and then contain the chemical itself. The, after we get the patient decontaminated, um, we want to try to decrease secretions in the mouth and the trachea and provide airway support. There are often antidote kits that are available for patients that um, are exposed to cholinergic agents. Um, one of those is the Duodote auto injector. The kit contains a single auto injector that has both atropine and proloxamine. Um, if the patient has a known exposure to nerve agents or gonophosphates with the manifestations of the signs and symptoms, um, you may need to use the antidote kit on yourself. Then miscellaneous drugs. Um, accidental or intention, well, intentional overdose with cardiac medications has become more and more common. Children might ingest them thinking they're candy. Older patients may forget to take or forgot that they took their first dose and take a second dose. Your signs and symptoms are all going to depend on which medication was ingested. Um, cardiac drugs tend to cause bleeding, cardiac dysrhythmias, unconsciousness, and can even send the person into cardiac arrest. Uh, contact the um, poison control center and you might need to give activated charcoal if you're allowed to. Aspirin poisoning um, still remains a potentially lethal um, condition. Ingesting too much aspirin can lead to nausea, vomiting, hyperventilation, and ringing in the ears, also known as tinnitus. Patients uh, with aspirin poisoning frequently have anxiety, confusion, tachypnea, hyperthermia, and then are danger of having seizures. Um, overdosing with acetaminophen or medication that contains acetaminophen is common. Acetaminophen, remember, is Tylenol. Um, among the top 25 substances with the largest number of fatalities due to poisoning, overdose, either intentional or unintentional, must be treated properly and aggressively. Um, oftentimes, uh, accidental acetaminophen overdose is just as serious as an intentional. Patients are unaware of the continuous exposure to the toxin and massive liver failure that they may be experiencing. They might not see the problems or have that liver failure actually be uh, noticeable for uh, a full week. Some alcohols, including methyl alcohol and ethylene glycol, are even more toxic than ethyl alcohol. Ethyl, ethyl alcohol is that drinking, like what we drink. Those other alcohols um, can cause severe tach tachypnea, blindness, renal failure, and eventually death. So we need to make sure we transport the patient in. Food poisoning. So food poisoning, almost always caused by eating food that's contaminated by a bacteria. Um, the organism itself may be what causes the disease or the toxin that the organism promotes or produces may cause the disease itself. And the table here on the left shows some common causes of food poisoning. One organism that produces the direct effects of food poisoning is salmonella. Uh, 
Seminella bacterium cause seminellosis, uh, characterized by some pretty severe GI symptoms within 72 hours of ingestion, including nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. Proper cooking kills the bacteria, and proper cleanliness in the kitchen prevents the contamination of uncooked food. The more common um, food poisoning is the ingestion of powerful toxins produced by bacteria, often just in your leftovers. Um, the bacterium Staphylococcus grows very quickly and produces toxins in food. Foods left unrefrigerated are the common route. Uh, results in sudden GI symptoms, including nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Symptoms usually start two to three hours after ingestion or as long as eight to 12 hours after ingestion. The most common uh, form of toxic ingestion is botulism. Botulism can result from eating improperly canned food. The spores of the Clostridium bacteria glow, grow and produce the botulism toxin. The symptoms are mostly neurologic, so blurred vision, weakness, difficulty in speaking and breathing, often fatal. Um, symptoms uh, tend to crop up within the first 24 hours after ingestion, but it can be as long as four days afterwards. In general, we don't need to determine the specific cause of acute GI problems. Um, just try and gather as much history as possible, transport the patient, um, if you have two or more people in the same group with the same illness, then it's likely that you can suspect the food. Um, I've taken food in with me, and a lot of times um, the hospital's not too worried about it. Plant poisoning, several different types there on the left-hand side that you can see in the table. Um, there are tens of of thousands of cases of plant poisoning every year. Um, many household plants are poisonous if ingested. Uh, some just cause local skin irritation. Some can affect the circulatory system, the GI tract, or the central nervous system. Uh, it's totally impossible to memorize every plant and poison, let alone their effects. There's just no way. So um, what you can do is assess the patient's airway and vital signs, notify the reasonable Regional Poison Center for assistance if you need to identify the plant, take the plant to the emergency department, provide um, prompt transport. Irritation with uh, the skin or mucous membranes is a problem uh, with a common house plant that a lot of people have. Um, when chewed, a single leaf may irritate the lining of the upper airway enough to cause difficulty swallowing, breathing, and speaking. So this is going to be more um, kids that are going to have problems with this. Most people don't eat their plants, but kids kind of go, mm, well, let's see, how, how does it go? Um, maintain the airway, give oxygen, and transport promptly. And this, that's, uh, the plant is dumb cane, by the way. Other than that, that's all I've got for Chapter 21.